Welcome back. In the last episode, we showed how to record a video uh, using JavaScript. And what we're going to do now is show how to upload that video to the YouTube API using the um, the Ruby gem that comes with uh, from Google um, using the YouTube data API. And so the first thing that we want to do is go into our existing video recordings controller and add a new method here for create inside of which we will uh, receive a post request with the file which contains the video that we recorded on the front end. Uh, and then we're going to pass this and we're actually going to like, this is where we're going to make a make a, an API call to the YouTube API. And um, well, so let's go to our routes and add this here. So we're going to say resources, videos, uh, video recordings, video recordings. And um, so, so in one of the comments for a previous video, uh, someone asked, is it possible to show an episode where we upload a video to the YouTube API in the background with a background job? Um, we, I think between the content here and the content in another episode about background jobs, we should be able to combine the two um, and make that work. Uh, but for now, we're actually just gonna upload sort of like synchronously or like in the controller action here. Um, and so if we go to our, we have an existing YouTube service that takes in the YouTube session. So here I'm just gonna initialize one of those and say youtube.new current user.youtube sessions.last. So that really just like pulls out the credentials. Um, and we have another episode where we showed how to like OAuth with YouTube uh, to set up and collect the, the access credentials. So then the next thing, well, maybe we're just gonna call like why to upload video or something. Um, so that doesn't actually exist yet. So upload video, what are we actually gonna need here to upload the video? Well, we're gonna need the file, probably a title, description, and that's likely a good start. Um, and so from the front end, we're gonna pass in the file data. So we're, we'll just pass in like params, like video recordings. Uh, and then file. Now note, like in this case, we're not actually going to um, store the video file anywhere inside of Rails. We're just gonna record it on the front end. When we're done, we're gonna upload it directly to YouTube. So there's not gonna be any intermediate step. There's no editing, there's no nothing in between when we record it, when it's done recording and when it's on YouTube. Um, and so we're just gonna pass in the file here. Now when we pass in a blob, when we pass a blob from the front end with, um, form data, the temp file will be available on this params object. So we can actually just call dot temp file here, and that'll give us access to the temp file. And the, the temp file is what YouTube required for setting the thumbnail. So we, we had a video all about how to upload thumbnails to YouTube. So if you want to go check that out, head over and take a look. And then here, we're also going to pass in the title. So this is going to be like, um, maybe it's just going to be like a video called the like stand up from 2021 March or something. And then the description will be like um, my five minute stand up from March. I don't know. I, I When I was testing this out earlier, I ran into some issues where like YouTube immediately like locked the video and said it was private and locked and it. It was just like sort of, they considered it spam. I didn't mean for it to be spam or anything, but there's also a couple other things we'd probably want to pass in here, like the date we want it to be published and some other information. Um, in fact, like we could pass in the title and description from the front end eventually, but for now, let's just keep it like this. And uploading the video is gonna return a video object that's gonna be like the YouTube API's video object. And then we'll just like render the JSON for that object back if it worked out. Okay, so then here we have in our in our YouTube service, right? We have in this like class that we created in our Rails app, we're using this Google API gem for YouTube V3. Um, and we're gonna need to dig into that and really like figure out exactly all the pieces required to upload a video. Um, so if you go over to the YouTube API documentation, under videos, there is this insert API endpoint. So all videos that are uploaded from here, um, wait, what? Okay, so they're all gonna be restricted to private. Okay, so this is what I ran into, was as soon as I uploaded it, it, was, it became private. Uh, so we have to go into, um, undergo some sort of audit in order to uh, 
be in compliance with their terms of service. So I'm not going to worry about that. Maybe I should. I don't know. But hopefully it doesn't like break the channel. We'll see. So uploads a video to YouTube and optionally sets the video's metadata. You can upload files max 128 gigs. That's huge. Um, and it takes in videos of several different MIME types or this uh, octet stream. Um, and it receives a post request to this endpoint. Uh, here's all the, the stuff that we need to pass in. The way that this works when you're making a, um, a post request is that when you specify the part, you have to say which parts you're going to be setting when you're creating the thing. And so today we're gonna to set the ID, we're gonna set a little bit of information in the snippet that's like the, um, or I'm sorry, we're not gonna set the ID. We have to pass ID so that we are returned the ID. Um, we're gonna set content about the snippet and about the status. So the snippet is where you can set the title, description, tags, things like that. And then the status is where we're gonna to try to set it as private. Um, and then you can also say like notify subscribers or not. Uh, if you're subscribed, I, I hope that I'm not going to uh, ping you with this, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. So um, let's actually open up the um, YouTube service here. So this always happens, APIs, um, YouTube uh, V3 and the service. And so this is gonna have a method probably um, for insert, insert underscore video. Okay, so this is the method that we wanna call is insert video. And the first thing is a string that represents the part. So we're here, we have, we have an instance of this service down below. Here we're in initializing the instance of the service and then we also have an auth client so that we can pass in our, our credentials. So we're gonna say service.insert video and we're gonna need these, um, that's our author, authorization or authentication. The part is gonna be ID, snippet, and status, status. And then we need to pass in the video object. So we're gonna need a video object, which is gonna be some instance of a class from, from this library. So in fact, like if we look for this video object here, right? It's the second param. So it's an instance of this type. So Google APIs video, okay. So then we can just say, we wanna make a new one of those. Um, so we're gonna say video object here. And then um, that's where we're gonna like create all the settings and everything for the title, description and all that. Auto levels, I don't know what that means. Um, let's actually, let's look and see what that is. Auto levels, should auto levels be applied to the upload? I don't actually know what that is. Uh, notify subscribers, we're gonna say false. On behalf of content owner. What does that mean? On behalf of the content owner, it's intended exclusively for YouTube content partners. Uh, identify a YouTube CMS owner who's acting on behalf of the, I mean, I think this is probably true, but whatever. Uh, stabilize, I don't know, fields, I don't know, quota. Upload source. Okay, so this upload source is important. And that is either an IO or a string with the file name containing the content to upload. So this is important. So the source or upload source is gonna be our file. That's the temp file for the blob that we're uploading. Um, and then finally, we just have like content type um, and we can say video webm, or you can do like, uh, I think you can even do um, MP4 or whatever. Uh, so we have our options and we got our options here. So I think this is probably a decent start. Now we need to figure out like all the different things that we need to pass into our video object. Um, and the way that I like to do this is, um, let's actually make a new tab uh, and we'll go Rails C and we'll uh, require this, this gem. So we'll say require, whoops. Require that Ruby gem for uh, for this Google API, and then because we're using pry Rails, we can do this crazy thing where we can change directory into this class. So I can use cd in the class name, and then I can do ls to list out the methods that I that I can see on that class. And this is how I kind of explore the API. So I want um, in this case I want to know what what actually are we what we're actually passing in, right? So status and snippet are two things that we can pass. So let's pass those. So we want uh, status and we want snippet. Status and snippet. 
And then we need to initialize instances of those, because each of those are also classes. So status is equal to something, and then snippet is equal to something. Um, and I don't know if we can actually like CD status or call status. Let's see. Um, LS status, man status. Uh, OK, I thought there might be like a way to just poke at status and see if I could get the, the doc string for that, but I don't think that's possible. So instead, we're just going to come in here and find a uh, YouTube video. Now, in a, in, a, in a file adjacent to the service.rb in here, we have classes.rb. This is where all the classes are defined. Um, I, I, yeah, I wish there was an easier way to, to go through this, but I think this is all just like auto gen code and the docs don't show full Ruby examples. So you kind of just have to dig through the source. So the thing we're looking for is class video. And in here it has class or it has a status, right? So status is an instance of this. So YouTube APIs, okay, so we're gonna initialize a new instance of that. And then for snippet, we're gonna initialize a new instance of that. And for each of these, we need to go like in again into pry and we'll crack these open and see what we can see. So you can also use like CD dash to CD like change back into the top level. You can also just like CD into each namespace and like see what things are available. So if we CD APIs, um, oh, actually we probably could have done this instead of looking at the classes thing, um, YouTube V3. And then here we see like all the different stuff that we might care about. So video snippet. So if we CD into video snippet and say LS, this is where it tells us that we can set the title and the description. So we'll do that. So we'll say in the snippet, we'll say title description. And then for the video status, we can also do CD dot dot to go back, like up into the parent module, CD video status. And then this has the privacy status when it was published at, um, upload status, et cetera, et cetera. So I think the published at will allow us to um, say that we want to, oh, this is the date the video was uploaded. Okay, I thought that would allow us to like schedule it for a later time, but maybe not. Um, but we do want the privacy status, privacy status to be, what is the possible enum values for privacy status? Is, what is this? This is one of what? Privacy status is a string. Okay, so it's one of private, public, or unlisted. So we'll just make it unlisted for now. Um, so we'll, for the status, we'll say privacy status is unlisted. All right, so we've got our video object. We've got our file object that's gonna be coming in from the front end. Um, so let's go back to the front end. So video recordings controller and, or no, video recordings new. So from here, when we're done playing the video, instead of just setting the source, let's make a post request to video recordings. And instead of sending JSON, we're gonna send some form data. And the form data is going to be, form data is new form data. And then we're gonna say form data.append um, video recordings recordings file and I think we can just pass chunks zero maybe uh, we'll see we'll see if we can do that okay and then we'll just comment these two out because we don't actually want to, to play those um, all right so since we're using uh, the fetch we're using like Ajax to make an API call and we're not including our CSRF token here what I want to do is go to the video recordings controller and disable auth or the uh, sorry the CSRF the CSRF check um, okay so if we go back to our video automations thing here and we click connect to YouTube we will authenticate with YouTube or authenticate to YouTube and so now we're authenticated and now we should be able to go to our uh, video recordings and create a new one 
So we're gonna say, hey, what's up? This is a test of our video recording system. Um, when we click stop, our expectation is that uh, this will send a video directly to YouTube through the YouTube API. Um, and we're opening the console here so that we can see any errors that might happen. All right, so I'm gonna click stop and we will pull up the logs. Um, sending upload start command to YouTube, sending upload command to YouTube. So it did pass in our file blob. Hey, 200, holy moly. All right, so now if we go to YouTube and pull up our channel and look at our videos, manage videos, we see, do we see anything? Let's see. Hmm. It's hanging. Why are you hanging? Oh, look at that. Okay. Awesome. Private and locked. Yeah, we know it's we know it's locked because of the thing we just talked about or the thing we just saw, but this video was just uploaded just now. This is what we just did, right? So, so we're gonna say, hey, what's up? This woo! is a test of Love it. Video. That's so cool. Okay. So that's it. That's uh, that's how you upload a video to YouTube and how you can sort of explore the classes that are in the YouTube Ruby Gem or the, the Google's Ruby Gem for interacting with the YouTube API. Um, so yeah, really, really exciting stuff. And hopefully this is helpful. Again, um, yeah, you might wanna be doing this uploading process as part of a background job or a background task. We're gonna do, um, in a future video, we're gonna show how to uh, write a background job for refreshing that auth token. Um, so that you don't have to like re-log in every single time you wanna use this. So hopefully that's useful. If it was, please consider subscribing. We really appreciate it. And uh, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up as that helps other folks find the content. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye friends. Mm -hmm.